Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brendan Bias from Checkit.com and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to take a regular photo of a fox and I swear if anyone leaves a comment saying what does the fox say or ring a ding ding or whatever the freak they say in that stupid video, I'm going to have to punch a baby. So do the world a favor and don't mention that stupid music video. Okay, capiche? Alright, we're good. So anyway, we're going to take this photo of a fox and turn it into a, drumroll please, a Firefox. <laughs> Alright, so that was really cheesy. But anyway guys, we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you how to create this uh, Firefox effect. And um, I don't know that what else there is to say about it. It's just this fox, it's engulfed in flames, it's got all kinds of glowing epicness. And a lot of people on our fan creations group wanted to know how to create it. So here we go. Let's get into the tutorial. So the first thing you're going to need is this uh, this texture or photo of a fox, which you can download 100% free off of the Stock Exchange, which is uh, another free website that I like to go to. And if you want to, you can use the Fire Texture Pack that I created and is available for download on our website. And once you have that downloaded and extracted, you should have all of these lovely pictures of fire at your disposal. However, there's only a handful of these that I'm actually going to be using throughout the tutorial. I'm going to be using these uh, last uh, 18 some odd photos down here at the bottom, as well as this group of photos right here, these uh, 27 some odd pictures right here in the middle. And um, just a combination of these are all I'm going to be using, so you guys can keep that in mind. So really guys, there's nothing to this whatsoever. Just pick a texture that you like and click and drag it in. So we got this nice little fire texture here. And let's just change the blend mode from normal to screen. And from here on out, it is solely up to you what the heck you do with the fire. So uh, for example, I'll just rotate this around, uh, maybe scale it down and throw it right here in between the eyes of the face of the fox. Why? Because it kind of looks like it's trailing up the nose and spreads out to the rest of the forehead. And I don't know, I just feel like it fits. So let's maybe scale this up, uh, bring it down, hit the little check mark, and move on to our next texture. So click and drag it in, change this sucker to screen, like we're going to be doing for the rest of the tutorial. And this thing kind of has a little bit of a rounded feeling up top, so maybe I'll just kind of drag this over here and make it fit along with the butt and the tail that happens to be jutting out awkwardly. So that's looking good. Let's hit the check mark and we'll just keep going on in that exact same fashion. Literally guys, it's just grabbing random pictures and coming up with a spot that looks like it, you know, it kind of fits in. So um, really guys, just kind of mess with it on your own. Uh, we're going to go old school here by uh, doing a little bit of a fast forward with some cool music in the background. So give me a few minutes to uh, do my thing and uh, let's see where we get. Alright, so I just took a couple minutes there to uh, get the overall feeling down for the, the fire textures and stuff. Um, but I, I just need to real quick do a little bit of cleanup. For example, I see some like random fire kind of like jutting out at an awkward angle. And that's just something that you guys need to keep in mind that you might want to like mask out per se. So um, since I have a whole lot of fire textures going on, I'm just going to... Uh, oops, let's just open up the, the layers panel and just turn off a whole bunch of fire textures, see if we can get that to disappear. 
until we uh, until we find out which layer that it is that we need to, to do. And there we go, found the texture. So it's apply a layer mask, go to our brush tool with the letter B, and we'll just kind of get rid of some of those wisps and stuff going on. And so we have just uh, some random stuff left over. So let's turn back on all of our layers that we have so far. And just a quick little like idea to throw out there for you guys. It, all, if all you want to do is get the overall body covered in fire, that's completely fine. But something that you might want to uh, keep in mind as an idea is to kind of go up to some of these uh, these middle textures up here. If you take a look at these, some of them are just kind of like random like wisps of stuff, uh, particularly like these right here. Uh, what you might want to do is uh, grab one of these, drag it in, and use this as simply just like a, a random like little trail of fire uh, just kind of coming off. It doesn't have to be like, uh, it doesn't have to be really intense or anything like that. It just needs to be something to kind of add to the, the wispy fire feeling of, of the fox here. So uh, let me grab a, another one here. Uh, let's let's see what we have over here. We have a couple just like random little flicks of fire. Uh, I really want one. This one might do pretty good. So that's 7662. Let's drag that in. And let's just kind of throw this over here. And so we get something like that. Actually, let's see what we what else we can get here. So I just kind of experiment with some of these uh these things and I don't know, maybe you'll get something that you weren't really uh weren't really expecting to do, but maybe you'll you'll like anyway. Um I'm not entirely sure what I was going for here. That's actually not half bad right there, so I'll just kind of uh throw that in as is. And maybe we'll throw in a couple more fillers for like uh like part of the face. And let's put that to uh not lighten but screen. And just kind of have some of these just like I said, just kind of like filling filling in on like random parts of like the face or just kind of scattered about below. It really doesn't matter. It's really it's really up to you what you decide to do here. However, I do want to add in just a few more here and uh, and get something that really strikes across the face of the fox here. So maybe I'll put that one. Ooh, this might look kind of cool. And let's try and see if we can get this one to kind of follow along the cheek there. Oh, that's kind of cool. And now that's creating this cool, like, little trail going off to the side. I like that a lot. So just kind of mess with that as you see fit until you get to a point that you like. And then what you can do to kind of help clean things up a little bit is to uh, select all of these fire textures here, group them together, and maybe we can call that our flames. And uh, one thing that we can do to kind of help wrap this together is to add something to give this a bit of a glow to it. So what do you say we create a new layer and let's call this our orange glow. And here's a little trick that I like to do to make this work. Uh, let's select our brush tool by hitting the letter B and make your foreground color uh, something like white or some other color. It doesn't really matter. And let's change our brush opacity down to uh, try like 15 or 20%. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to zoom in just a little bit. And we're going to paint in this white color on areas that we think could use a little bit of a glow. So basically everywhere that there's fire. All right. So we'll just kind of uh, go along around all these little wisps and stuff like that. And of course, along like the tail over here. And you can always uh, click and drag a couple of times to increase the uh, the little glow in certain areas and stuff like that. And we'll also have this kind of trail off of the edge of the flames like that. And of course, we'll add in a nice little bit of glow on these over here. So just kind of uh, play around with that a little bit randomly. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. And once you're content with the... Uh, the amount of white that you have on there. Let's double click the thumbnail for the orange glow layer and this should bring up our blending options. And we're going to change the fill opacity down to 0%. And this kind of gets rid of the glow that we applied, which is kind of counterproductive. So let's go back and apply a color overlay. 
And let's make this into a, a sort of orangey uh, reddish color. So maybe a little bit more gold. I'll leave that up to you. Let's hit OK and let's change the blend mode to linear dodge. And then if you so choose, you can bring down the opacity a little bit so it's not overly intense, like somewhere around 50 or 60%. So let's hit OK and we can get an idea of how this glow is being applied. So maybe we'll actually go back in and click and drag a couple more times on areas that we want to uh, to glow a little bit more. So let's uh, let's actually kind of make this rather intense. I might actually go back in and make this a little bit more of a reddish orange, just so that way it's uh, got a more deep, fiery feeling to it. And let's make a pretty intense glow going on here. And let's just kind of add that in around over here. All right. And let's make this particularly intense over here on the tail. Uh, I'm, I'm literally just making this up as I go. There's no, there's no specific way to do this as per usual. And so a little bit of a before and after. We get a cool looking glow going on here. Maybe not overly realistic, but it looks cool and that's all we really care about, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, one thing's for sure. We need to create a bit of contrast between the fox and the environment around them just to make this feel a little bit more intense. So let's go to the background layer and let's duplicate that by hitting Control or Command J. And we don't really need to name that anything specific. And let's go to the left hand side and choose our burn tool. And for this we'll have the range set to our midtones with an exposure of 100%. And for this we'll keep it nice and simple. Let's simply burn all of the areas besides the fox. So let's get the uh, the ground out here and kind of go around between uh, the legs there and going up top like so and around the tail and also let's not forget this little spot between the body and the legs so we'll get something like that uh, and just to create a, uh, a little bit of a neater effect let's actually burn the corners a little bit more to kind of create a sort of vignette feel and then we'll also do the, the edges a little bit more. And once again, we'll go back and do the corners. Okay. So this is the uh, overall effect that we're getting over here. And uh, one more thing that we can do to uh, darken up a little bit is to open up the uh, adjustments panel over here and open a curves adjustment. And let's just kind of click and drag this down to darken up the image. And so this is the overall feeling that we're starting to get here. We're getting a very nice look. However, I want to add a little bit more to the, the glow. But this time, let's create a different layer. And this is going to be for our red glow. And this red glow is going to be between the curves adjustment layer and our flames. And this time around, uh, once again, let's zoom in. And this time, we're going to paint in in all of these blank areas between the flames. So let's kind of uh, put it in between here and between over there. And we're just going to make a nice glow between all these flames here. Now, we don't have to get too crazy with this. This is just for a very, very slight effect that we'll be seeing. And I'll show you where we're going with this in just a little bit. And just let me really quickly go through and apply uh, this little bit of a glow in here. All right, so um, I think I'm about done uh, adding in this, uh, this random uh, set of glow going on here. Now let me show you what we're doing here. Once again, let's double click on this glow. Uh, put down the, the the fill opacity and apply a, a color overlay. This time we're going to make this like a like a deep red color, and then once again we'll change that to linear dodge and keep that as that reddish color. So if we click OK and zoom in, uh, for example, let's go into one of these areas uh, like on the foot. If you turn that off and on, you'll see that we get a nice reddish color as sort of like an underlying. Uh, like a like a different shade of like the of the fire so that way we have like the really intense red underneath and then we have the really bright orangey golden color on top so that way it gives it like a like a two layer feeling rather than just a whole bunch of you know plain old orange flames and stuff so in my opinion it just kind of adds in that that extra level that 
that it helps it out to to be something a little bit more realistic feeling. So if you want to add that in, you you can. If you don't if you don't really want to, I mean that's that's completely fine as well. I just find it something that kind of adds to the effect. So uh, once we've got all of that going, one more thing that we can do to kind of help out the glow is to create another curves adjustment layer on the very top. Uh, this time let's brighten everything up just a touch. And I don't want this to be applied to the entire image here. So with the layer mask selected for the curves to adjustment layer, let's invert it by hitting control or command I. And then let's go back to our brush tool, make sure we have white as our foreground color. And let's amp up the opacity of our brush. And let's paint in this white color on all of the flames and such. And let's just see what we're starting to get here. Maybe we'll kind of bring that back in. And let's just see what we're starting to get. Huh? All right. So let's do a before and after. And you see it just kind of uh, adds another layer of glow to the, the image here. Once again, completely optional, but I think it's uh, kind of cool to have here. And from here on out, you guys can do whatever the heck you want. Uh, for example, something that I've done is to uh, create a new layer. And, and this time, let's hit Shift Backspace or Shift Delete. And we can fill it in with a 50% gray. And maybe we can add in some, some noise on top of it. Let's do like 20% noise and set that to overlay. And that will give us like this cool little uh, a little layer of grit on top of it. Maybe I can show you guys uh, how it looks up close and personal. It, it makes it, uh, maybe I did a little bit too much noise, but you get the idea. It just adds like a little bit of a gritty feeling on top of it. And we'll probably lower the opacity there to, to kind of balance it out. But anyway, guys, from here on out, you can do whatever the heck you want. Some things that are cool to do is to add in maybe some, uh, what was I going to say here? Some, some magic bullet to create a really intense effect or maybe some fractalius. I've done a tutorial on that in the past. Either way, guys, from here on out, uh, it's completely up to you. We are done right now. We have a cool Firefox. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And also, if you guys uh, decide that you enjoyed this tutorial, then please give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Uh, I really appreciate it when you guys do that. And um, I think that's all I have for you guys for this week's tutorial. So um, once again, this is Brennan Bias, and I will see you next week. Peace out.